SABC News anchor Vuyo Mvoko is there for us. Vuyo, good evening to you. For the viewers who are just joining the program, what have some of the biggest developments been so far today? Thanks uh, very much, uh, Emmanuel. We still, uh, everyone here among us, uh, ourselves as journalists, who's still talking about uh, the briefing that uh, the man who runs the ANC currently, and that's uh, Treasurer General Paul Mashatil. Mashatile, who is of course also acting as a Secretary General of the organization. I mean, many things uh, came up there. Among them, of course, the issue of salaries, uh, unpaid uh, uh, ANC workers, uh, which continues to be a problem. He's promising to fix that. They've paid salaries for June, but um, he promises that week after next, uh, they will be able to pay the July salaries. But at the same time, um, he claims they are also dealing with the problem quite uh, comprehensively. I was going to uh, take up this issue with you given uh, the background. I remember in January talking to Paul Mashatile about this very same issue and the promises uh, that uh, he was making, but also the issues that are involved, which in my view also go, you know, to the extent of the problems uh, that the ANC has, but uh, which it is not willing to address or ad address adequately. And and I feel also uh, 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 that uh, they are not prepared or willing to take very tough decisions that they should be taking if they are, you know, to ensure that the organization survives and things like, uh, you know, not paying uh, 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 your workers ahead of such an important uh, conference and the embarrassing uh, spectacle that has been given the fact that there were protests here as delegates were arriving to come for conference. But let's park that for now. Let's talk about what has been happening and where things are and to help me navigate uh, some of these issues. I do have the chairperson of the ANC in the Northern Cape, and that is Zamani Sol. Uh, Zamani, good evening. Thanks very much uh, for your time. A short while ago, Paul Mashatili addressed a media briefing. He says everything is going very well. Thank you very much. Is that your view as well? Yeah, definitely everything is going quite well. And uh, I firmly believe that this policy conference, together with the forthcoming national conference, will definitely serve as a turning point in the life of the movement. Your president implored the delegates uh, to forget about slogans, uh, even from a policy point of view, um, from what he said in his opening address, they, they there's nothing to separate comrade from another. Um, so the rhetoric must stop. People must focus um, on solutions to the problems that the country has, whether it's energy, uh, whether it's unemployment, whether it's how to advance an economy that is performing very badly um, at the moment. Is that happening? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I've been in a number of commissions here. You could see that there is dedicated commitment to come up with some solutions in addressing some of these major challenges which are confronting the country. Uh, we've identified it that uh, in terms of the socio-economic landscape of the country, there's basically three main fault lines. High levels of unemployment, unemployment particularly amongst young people, high levels of poverty and inequality. And the different commissions are really dealing with uh, those difficult questions on how best to address these challenges. Let's take a, hug, a couple of issues. Um, on the question of ESCOM, which is a drag, not to the economy. Um, it's making the economy perform even worse than it, took, it could otherwise uh, perform. Uh, the president came a few days ago with um, an, a number of, uh, 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 with a plan to address the, the, the ESCOM challenges. Is this conference agreeing with what the president has put on the table? Yeah, in essence, uh, the conference, the policy conference supports some of those initiatives to look at a wide variety of energy mix on how best to ensure that on a generation side we've got adequate uh, energy in order to ensure that we are not getting into blackouts. We don't black out the economy and uh, ensure that uh, even for household consumption we've got adequate energy. There is generally support for, those, for, the, for the address by the President. Talking to your comrade in a second about yeah. that, he's going to get into the detail of that. But when it comes to fighting corruption, 
are you in agreement or around the step aside yeah. rule for example are you in agreement about what to do uh, um, to prevent you know people with vested interests yeah. from hijacking processes or blocking uh, solutions to the problem of corruption I think what South Africans should celebrate is the fact that corruption is a standing agenda item in the political program and life of the African National Congress. With the last policy conference, if you can remember, the major topical issue was about the Integrity Commission, its status, whether it should be a recommending body or the decision that it takes, it should be final decisions. I'm so finally giving it powers you can, now. You can, you can remember that. And then that was a divisive item. It was a centrifugal policy issue which sent us in different directions. At last we took a decision that it should be included in the Constitution. The Integrity Commission is in the Constitution now, but the major question is about its questions. It's about its powers. So the Integrity Commission is our central arsenal in ensuring that we enhance the integrity of the organization. Now we are coming to this policy conference. The major and the centrifugal policy issue here is the issue of step aside. And step aside is about the conduct of individual ANC members in relation to public purse. So South Africans should celebrate that you've got a political party like no other political party in this country that says we have to put up a formidable fight against corruption and we are going to come up with measures to ensure we do that. And all those measures, they tend to bring up some divisions within our ranks. But I get a sense that there is general consensus that we can't do our way with step aside, but we have to find means to ensure that there is consistent and better application of step aside. We will, of course, I mean, judge you um, by the results. Thank you very much, much. Zaman Sol, who is, of course, the chairperson uh, of the ANC in the Northern Cape. Indulge me for a few minutes, please, if you will, um, uh, Iman. I do have the Minister of Public Enterprises, Praveen Gordon, uh, here with me. Good evening, Mr. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Let's cut to the chase on the ESCOM uh, issue. Is this conference agreeing wholeheartedly with what the president has put on the table um, as plans to deal with our electricity crisis? I, I think that would be the case. I think uh, what we need is a more uh, detailed explanation of what it means uh, in practical terms. So there's three or four key elements, as you know. The first is see what we can get out of the current ESCOM plants uh, in terms of extra megawatts on the system. The second is we need to bring in more energy in whatever form, gas, renewables, uh, or any other form, some in the short term, some in the medium to long term. The third is there's a lot of red tape in government. So there's been a huge effort put in over the last few weeks to cut everything down to size, so to speak, so that there's greater efficiency. Uh, the fourth is to get cooperation uh, from all the different sectors of society, but in particular, manage our demand. Put off extra lights, uh, switch off geysers, switch off swimming pools, whatever the case might be, which interestingly you see in Europe today, uh, where are fascinating things happening because of the shortage of energy. And the fifth, finally, you will see a restructuring of the industry itself and the uh, restructuring of ESCOM as an institution. So that's, some of that has happened. The establishment of the transmission company for, for a start, the setting up of uh, a generation company, which will have both the coal-powered stations, but all the others as well, uh, private sector investment. And then ESCOM, as you know, is making land available around its power stations for uh, IPP uh, to set up plant. And that's an interesting exercise because you don't have to put new transmission wires in. You can immediately connect with the wires that are actually available. Now, sitting behind this are uh, very detailed plans. And from, tomorrow, uh, from Monday morning, we begin the implementation process. Now, has all of that um, found resonance? Uh, among your comrades here, or do some of them still have uh, lingering questions which presumably they would have expressed? If 
Well, not everybody follows every detail just about energy because there's a wide range of issues that we follow here. But in time, I think our responsibility is to explain to the South African public, but also to the ANC membership, what each of these elements mean in detail, how it will actually, over possibly the next three to four years, ensure energy security for South African industry, for South African businesses, and for South African households, uh, including uh, creating that kind of environment in the Southern African region as, as well. So the detailed understanding, I think, will unfold. The key elements are beginning to be understood. Uh, and we'll do a lot more to familiarize people with that. But so far, no pushback from those um, uh, who are not interested in connecting the dots to use your... <laughs> no, there will always be naysayers of uh, one kind or another, but there'll be an absolute minority. I think the rest want the country to work. They want investment in this country. They want businesses to work. And they want the energy situation to stabilize in some way. And here we have an integrated plan that takes us in that direction. Well, let's leave it there for now. Thank you very much for your time. Praveen Gordon, the Minister of Public uh, Enterprises, we had to squeeze that in. Uh, I Again, having gotten an opportunity um, to speak to him, albeit briefly. But, but for now, that's where we're going to leave it. Uh, uh, Iman, it's back to you. Thank you so much, Vuyo. And uh, we'll be back with Vuyo and the team a little bit later on.